What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. It happened again. I recorded a video and technical difficulties. Started editing the video and since it was all on one machine, my OBS recording, it was just one scene and my face cam was over the code the entire time. But now I'm recording my code on my MacBook and my camera on my desktop. So now I can put my face cam wherever, like here or here or here, and my code will still be visible. I think I'm gonna do this from now on because it just solves all problems of covering stuff that I wanna show and it gives me more flexibility of where I'm gonna put anything within the scene. Enough rambling about my technical difficulties. Let's get into the video. Today we're talking about brute force attacks. Now, brute force attacks are a very common type of cybersecurity data breach attack where hackers will try to try as many passwords as possible, usually common passwords, to try to crack a password that is unknown. Brute force attacks are common in both a four number numerical password or a word password. Both of them have different implementations for trying to crack them using brute force but today we are going to be talking about the numerical side before we jump into my little example which is just a very small example let's just talk about brute force attacks in general how they've been mitigated over the years and why they're not so prominent now i mean they're kind of still prominent because with the advancement of cybersecurity, hackers will advance as well and try to find new ways of making their attacks quicker to overcome these new security features not too long ago it used to be about 40 bit encryption with keys with data on the internet and just data transfer in general there is usually a thing called key encryption to ensure that the data does not get received from a man in the middle keys are basically byte manipulations that cause the original password to be different than obviously the original password the key is then sent over with the password to its destination the receiver will receive the key and the packet of data and use the key to unlock the data most security features nowadays prevent man in the middle attacks from happening because they don't allow the key to be sent in the same regard as the actual data so people will usually catch encrypted data if they're trying to hack but they won't have the key so they can't actually access what that data means or you know the value from it key encryption used to be about 30 40 bits and when you translate that to the amount of attempts that you need to actually crack the data it is too to the power of 30 or 2 to the power of 40 which is what a million to a billion attempts no i think that's even more actually it's like a trillion i'm not really good with my exponentials even though i'm a math guy i don't know how that happened exponents are just threw out the window whenever i got into math anyways nowadays most key encryption is upwards of 255 bits which is like a billion 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 i is there even a word for that there probably is but i don't know what it is it's a lot of attempts so obviously security has been increased and brute force attacks aren't as popular as they once were at least in this regard of blind brute forcing there is brute forcing where people will use dictionaries as in if it's a word password they will do the most common word passwords or i guess you could do that with numbers as well if your pin is one two three four just click off the video and go change your passwords and if your password is soccer mom four 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 then how are you not hacked yet basically they'll use this dictionary along with the password input to just streamline all of the popular passwords until they crack the right one now today we are going over a python implementation of a brute force attack now this is not an actual brute force attack and i'll explain why right now let's jump into visual studio code so we're in vs code and as you can tell it's one file so already off the bat this is not realistic with data on the internet most data is stored on servers and there is a difference between front end and back end when you input your password attempt on a user interface it is then thrown to the throne is then sent to the back end process handled and then they will send you back a valid or invalid flag for if you actually got the password correct that's the first thing the second thing is that this implementation has unlimited attempts most websites and i guess just security features in general will not allow you to input more than i don't know five passwords before giving you kickback before saying oh you tried too many times please wait or reset your password this is a great feature to mitigate brute force attacks because brute force attacks really aren't going to get it in the first five times it's going to be like i said millions and millions of attempts so this is the easiest way to mitigate brute force attacks on your website 
on your server whatever you are trying to create now let me show you what i have so far to show you how the program works before we start writing the brute force function so that we can actually crack the password so right now if i press run it's going to open the terminal and it's going to show us a password 7215 i can enter the password and we have access granted we got in now obviously if i do a wrong password it's going to say incorrect password and we're going to be able to get the password because it's right there at the top we can see the password now what happens if we don't see the password if i comment out this part right here and we run the program it's just going to ask us to enter a password i don't know the password could you imagine if i actually just guessed it real quick that would have been crazy so right here we're at a loss and as a hacker you'd be like oh okay what do i do now this is where we're going to implement our brute force attack for the sake of showing you guys that the original password does not change throughout the brute force attack we are going to keep this uncommented and we're going to show the password in the beginning i have it set up here that when you type crack it's going to run the brute force attack and we have to flesh out that function here so let's get into doing that okay so first off let's look at how our password is formulated in set password our password is just a random integer between the numbers 0 and 9999 and this is to simulate a four digit pin so for like your debit card for example when you put your debit card in at the grocery store and it asks you for your pin it's four digits you press enter the reason we have this int uh f string password 04d is to pre-pin any zeros to the password in case let's say the random number is 34 it's going to pre-pin two zeros to make it a full four digit passcode now in run brew i'm going to have a global attempt variable and we're going to initialize to oh, don't mess up the mic we're going to initialize this to zero and let's bring that into our run brew oh we gotta do this like that and all we're gonna do is we're going to increment it by one make that cleaner we're gonna increment it by one and we're going to return that attempt and just to make it cleaner let's also do that f string prepending of the zeros so now if i run the program our password is 4181 we are going to um well i just brain farted we're going to type crack and it's going to find our password in 4181 attempt we started at zero it's going to increment up until it finds the password so it's going to take 4181 attempts to find the password 4181 so we got access granted but look how long it took us it took us i mean my terminal doesn't even go all the way up to that point it took us 4181 iterations of running the brute force to find this password so now let's see if we can optimize this especially if let me see if i can get a good example this is a perfect example nice if we have the password 9857 and we run crack it's going to take 9857 attempts to find that password now one way that we can make this a little bit more optimized is that we can partition where our attacks are coming from if we have an attack coming from zero we should also have an attack coming from 9999 and run them in unison obviously as an attacker we don't know where the password lies on this spectrum of zero to 9999 but if we run them from the back and from the front it's probably a better chance of getting it if it is an outlier the bad part of this implementation would be if the password lies in the middle around 5000 because we would be going from the left 5000 and the right 5000 being around 10,000 so it would be the max amount of attempts to find this password and at that point it would be better to just go from one end and try to find the password but let's do that second implementation real quick just to see how it works so we're going to have our attempt to equal 9999 and let's do a run flag so we're going to do global run flag and we'll set run flag to zero and this will basically work like a semaphore if you've ever done computer threading it would actually be better to do multi-threading for this brute force attack if that is an option to find the password in a timely matter like if we divided the sequence up by four and if we ran it from zero 2500 5000 and 99999 and ran them all in different directions we would find the password in less attempts but we're not getting into computer threading or semaphores for that matter in this video so let's just run with our binary semaphore that we have it's going to start off by doing global attempt global attempt is going to run when run flag equals zero i don't know why i wrote it like this i forgot the word if there we go and else is going to be attempt two minus equal one and we'll just return it the same way and then obviously we need to change the run flag so that the other 
part of the program can run on the next iteration. So now what we'll see happen is it's going to run from zero and 9999 alternating increment and de-increment until it finds the password. So this is good if it's closer to 9999 or it's closer to zero. So let's run this and look at the test results that we have. With the password 4944, this is gonna be a little less optimized than our first implementation since it's running from both sides of the spectrum. If we just did it from zero, it would be 4944 attempts, but now it's going to be 9887 attempts. Basically 4944 multiplied by two minus one. Let's try to find an example where this actually works in our favor. Uh, That's not that good. I mean, I, I could just set the password, but uh, <laughs> like the random is more fun. That's that's not a bad one. So 16. Well, I mean, this is still going to be more than 1628. It's going to be, yeah, times two. All right. Here's a great example. So whereas before this would take 9659 attempts going from zero to this password, if we do crack, it's going to take 680 attempts which is not that bad. If you can see the math, where this math lies, it's going to be 10,000 minus 9659 times two, and then minus one, which would be 680. So this is just a very simple implementation of a brute force attack. I just wanted to show you guys that with numerical brute force attacking you do have this level of context clues that you can use we know that it's a four digit number so we can kind of partition where our sequencing is going to be but also to give you guys a little bit of history and to let you know that brute force attacking is not that viable in today's world with the security features that are in place i hope you guys learned something about brute force attacks and if you have any fun facts or extra knowledge to share Drop it down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, have a great day. Peace out.